Hello and welcome to Kendo Ring. I do Kendo. It's quite good fun. I've always enjoyed a bit of swordsmanship in the real world as well as in the game world. So, on my first playthrough of Elden Ring, I basically used everything at my disposal and got to NG Plus at level 300 odd with a lot of magic, a lot of summons. And the game really made me a bit lazy at that stage. So I thought, let's do a no magic run. And let's theme it towards Kendo. So, no magic, sorceries or incantations. No summons, golden or spirit ashes. No shields, which therefore means there'll be no parrying, because you don't really use a shield in Kendo at all. There's going to be no Ashes of War that fire projectiles or do anything that looks magical. If it's going to be an, an Ash of War a skill, it's going to look realistic. We're only going to use katanas or similar weapons to that to stick with the theme. Dual wielding is going to be allowed because in Kendo we do have a style of fighting called Nito, where we fight with a weapon in each hand. And we're going to try and stick to armour that roughly suits the theme as well. Obviously, we're starting as a samurai, so that's a good start. In the spirit of uh, martial arts, particularly Kaido, we're going to allow bows, but it's going to be a, a, a melee focus build. I'm mainly thinking if I need to get through a dungeon and I need to deal with a fire column, that's going to be when I want to use a bow rather than actual combat. So, who looks most like a sort of kendo type person here? I would say, I think probably the truth seeker. I think, I think he's the man, so he's going to be the one attempting this build. When we get a bit later on, we're going to maybe try and pick up some items like the sanguine waist cloth, which is a barefoot leg armor, which kind of suits the build, and in the the same cave where you get the black raptor's feathers, there's a really nice helmet that looks a bit like a kendo helmet. So we're going to try and get that. Obviously, starting with the Ushi Gitana, the first challenge is can we get through the tutorial using this style of combat, which I actually think won't be that much of a challenge because the Samurai Starter class is pretty good anyway. The initial boss, I'm pretty much writing off in my last, in fact, if you've been following my All Quests, All Endings guide on NG+, I killed the Grafted Sign quite easily, but it was entirely using Unendurable Frenzy, which is, if it's set up right, it's a horrendously powerful spell. I'm going to have a go here, but I'm not going to be successful. The, uh, the Grafted Sign is probably beyond my skill level at this point but again i'm hoping through this playthrough to a find it a bit easier than my first playthrough and b get out of the kind of laziness of using an all-powerful spell casting type character and get back to the dodge rolling and range and timing aspects of the melee side of the game probably got a better chance as a samurai than as a wretch which I did when I first played this, but even so, this isn't going to go well. You really can't rely on the sword, certainly not the Uchi Gitana, to block these physical attacks. It doesn't negate enough damage for that to be useful. If you're going to attempt this yourself, you're going to have to go for a, a very much dodge rolling, rolling out of the way, dodging kind of strategy rather than blocking. So we've talked to Melon and we've been given some flasks and we're now going to attempt to do the tutorial cave. And I'm going to talk through a little bit comparing the way our samurai guy fights to some kendo techniques. So his stance here, the way he's holding his blade, it isn't really one of the, the sort of classic few main stances that you'll learn to do your ikkyu. He's also got his left leg forward, which is kind of unusual. 
Normally, if we were preparing to fight with a shinai or a, a bokken, we'd have a right leg forward, a left leg back with the heel off the ground, and we'd be in something like chudan no kamai, or middle guard stance. It's a bit like a chudan, that's probably the closest. That's the guarding position. And that guard counter is basically blocking and doing a nice big men strike down, down, right down the centre. Looks a bit like a suriegi actually. And that one we missed. But again, a nice Simon coming in there. But there might be a special name. Again, I've only been training for about 12 months. And the technique that sweeps right down from the head to the body might have a different name. Going for the head, we call those a men strike. If it's going to be diagonally to the side of the head, it's a Simon. We don't do so much dodging and rolling. And we don't do those upward strikes, which could actually be very effective. It's a nice Simon again there. Again, the main target areas we go for when we're competing in kendo are the head, which we call men, the body, which we call doe, but it has to be at the side of the body, about where the ribs are, the wrists, which we call cote, and the throat, which we call a ski. But in the kata, for example, there are examples when you'll try and ski somebody in the body, which is basically a stab. When we say ski in kendo, that means to stab. Again, here we're finding a bit more trouble against somebody with a shield. The way is going to be to either move or maneuver around him or just to break that defence and then come in with a men strike. Now the next man we're going to meet is a guy with a projectile weapon, I think. Certainly after these couple, we've got the guy on the bridge. Again, nice big men strike there. I look more like a doe strike that did when we hit him. So he's going to try and shoot at us, and we've got to dodge those arrows to get close enough to hit back. Nice big men strike, Simon. Then we're on to another one of these guys here. Now, the skill that uh, comes with this character weapon is the unsheath which is actually more of an Aido technique but I think it's a very valid technique to use so we're going to throw a bit of Aido into this run as well that was like a sort of big fumikomi so it's a stamping motion men strike and that's something that's important that anybody who's doing kendo needs to master before they take their first grading down fumikomi men Again, that was a bit more of an Aido style move there. Very effective, this unsheath move. And it's very within the theme of, uh, of Kendo, if you consider Aido a uh, sort of similar branch of the same sort of affair. We're not going to go for too many sneaky stealth kills in this. We're going to try and play the honourable opponent and try and make ourselves aware to them and give them a chance to defend themselves. Very nice, big men strike, and a ski straight to the stomach. Again, we don't actually practice stab each other in the stomach, but that does form part of the Nippon Kendo Kata number three. So up to the first boss now. Soldier of Godric. Now it's gonna... So, into the boss room. It's going to give us some advice about guard counters any second. Well, we don't really need that advice. We're going to go straight in with a uh, unsheath. That stunned him. Then we can run around the back and ski him in the back. And already he's pretty much done. Nice big Simon to finish him off. And that's it. We've successfully got through the tutorial using a sort of kendo stroke Aido style move set with obviously at least at least the variation of it which exists within within Elden Ring. Not too difficult. I think things are gonna get a bit more difficult later on. 
how we got on against things like the Tree Sentinel and Margit, Radan, Melania. There's going to be some tough fights ahead, but we're going to see how we fare against all. I'm not going to. I'm not going to record every single second of this and and have a second by second playthrough. I'm just going to put up the challenges, the interesting challenges, and how they go, and talk about it. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you'll join me on the next one. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.